Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're watching episode five, True Detective. The last episode was awesome. I was like stunned by that whole sequence. Absolutely stunning. It was really amazing. This show, man, I didn't see it coming. Every single episode is better than the last one. Let's get into it. Here we go. True Detective, episode five. All right. This is his guy, okay. I was wondering if Rust's cover was blown, but I guess not, unless he's forcing him. I'm repping some people. They want to get to the good cook. Coke for Crystal. I ain't got no use for it. All your money. You can see your soul at the edges of your eyes. Damn. You got a demon, little man. And I don't like your face. Ginger, you call me again, I'm setting miles on you. I see you again, and I'm putting you down. There's a shadow on you, son. There's a shadow on you. This guy's deep. That did not go well. That's not what I thought was gonna happen at all. I was like, well, at least we did all that hustle last episode for a reason, but. I got him. We're on empty roads now, so I gotta drop back. So he's just following him. Okay, so I guess maybe that was part of the plan, like whether he wants to do this fake deal or not, they can just follow him. Okay, fair. I'm not a cop. I don't ever think like that. How we doing back there, Ginger? <laughs> Alright, so I guess his cover is blown now if it wasn't, so aren't they gonna have to kill that guy? Look, you want my help? Just show me the rest of the file. It's supposed to be like a consultation, right? Yeah, yeah but uh, you go first. I don't think it's a consultation. They're interviewing him with a different objective. I don't think they trust his story. We're gonna have to call this in, Russ. Nah, we don't wanna do that. They're off the book, right? Just the once, the way you tell it. You know why the story's always the same? Because it's the truth. Because it only went down the one way. Why don't they believe them? What has happened in the present that's making them reassess this whole thing? I guess there's been another murder, so. Is that a grenade? Damn. I'd be so paranoid like you're just gonna step on a mine or something. What if you don't see every booby trap? Oh, <gasps> is that one of those things, the teepees? All right, this is it. They found it. So is this where they saw the guy with the mask, which would be because he's cooking meth? Well, they didn't see it. We saw it, I should say. You go back, call it in. I'll wait here. You got a whole position. Yeah. Yeah, right. You ain't doing this without me. I don't know, fellas. Seems pretty dangerous. We were just about to turn back. Call in Parish State, whoever. But... That ain't what happened. Bullets cut through right near Russ's head. They'd already spotted it, and they had some high velocity. I mean, it was on. This isn't true. Are they lying? Okay, maybe not, maybe not. They're both lying. Why? Why would they both be lying? Well, they must have done something bad. Did they kill somebody? This is the guy. I'm nervous, okay. Is that him? He's back in the house. That's the guy. That's the guy. State police! Put your hands on your head! Put them on your head! Now! Okay, right now. Intertwine your fingers. Oh my god. They know there's another guy though, right? They saw him. It's time, isn't it? Shut the f*** up. What is this? I heard something. Careful, Marty. Well, obviously they live. I'm so stupid. I'm like, don't die. Freeze, put it down. Hands Marty, up, Marty. state police. I saw you in my dream. This guy is creepy. Uh, he's gonna find something Fire! terrible. What is it? What is it? What is it? Time is a flat circle. Put your hands What'd on you your head. What'd you find? What'd you find? He found somebody dead. He found someone dead. A bomb on him? Captain America, Marty Hart, decides he's gonna flank around the back of the house where Ledoux's firing at us. Just as Ledoux what? turns, bam. d -wall, he made a run for it. And his homemade security system took care of the rest. What did he find? We gotta make this look right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. What is it? Oh, God. Oh, it's gonna be somebody dead. Oh. She was alive, right? 
What do we do, Russ? We just see you commit to something, and I go see to the kids. Look, I don't want to know anything anymore. This is a world where nothing's solved. Someone once told me time is a flat circle. Everything we've ever done, we'll do. We're gonna do over and over again. That little boy and that girl, they're gonna be in that room again and again and again forever. Man. Things were pretty good for a while. All right, so murder solved. Are they back or just hanging out for the kids? Maggie came around, talking, counseling. Well, I hope Marty learned his lesson. You know, mistakes happen, I suppose. Nobody's perfect, but he shouldn't cheat on her again, probably. You know about Russ. Word got around quick. You want a confession? See if old's available. I cleaned up, but maybe I didn't change. The solution of my whole life was right under my nose. That woman, those kids, and I was watching everything else. Infidelity is one kind of sin. My true failure was inattention. Interesting. I think that's probably true of a lot of us. You just don't often hear somebody realizing it, acknowledging it, saying it out loud to someone else. I'm just trying to understand what's the uh, message. Dads. Women don't have to look like you want them to, Dad. I'm just trying to understand. Why would you? Teenage girls. Look at him living this domestic life. What in the F happened between here and the interviews? Tell us what you know about his girl. Uh, Lori. They're asking so many personal questions about Russ. Why does their personal life have anything to do with the case, you know, if they're just trying to gather the facts of the case? It seems like they're trying to figure out what kind of men these guys are. Dad. Tell it to your mother. Oh, what'd she do? A <clears throat> deputy found her parked in a car with two boys. Oh, Jesus. In states of undress, you know. Boys are 19 and 20. Got them in holding for the night. What are you thinking? Was this one of those things that I'll never understand, being captain of the varsity slut team? Oh, okay, that's not helpful. F*** you. <gasps> no, 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 no. You can't do that, man. First you come in and say, I got the drugs from somewhere else. Then you say, no, I don't remember. And you're making it too complicated. They got you. You just gotta change your play. I don't think I ought to be blamed for things I did when I was under the influence of anything. I don't think you should either. That's what I'm saying. He's not really helping him, is he? Or is this a tactic? You sobered up now. You got your mind right. Now you gotta show them the difference between that madman and the man who's sitting here right now. What'd you say to the pharmacist? Give me everything. And then what? Oh. Oh. You want forgiveness for that? Yeah. I want it. You want what? Forgiveness. So as I said, he's just getting a confession? You see what you just did? You just cop to a double murder. They got you now. I want to make a deal. I know things. Oh, well, what you know now, all of a sudden? I know who you are. That woman y'all found out in the woods. Really? The antlers. Hmm. What do you know about that? Y'all never caught the man that did that. He was trying to buy some time, ain't you? I met him once. There's big people who know about him. Like the religious guy? He's dead, boy. I'll tell you about the Yellow King. Yes, 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 yes. We do want to know about that. Give me a name. You got the confession, then you made it inadmissible. We appreciate the assist. What the f is going on here? Yeah, what the hell? I got somebody we need to talk to. I'll tell you on the way. Is he going back to see that dude about the Yellow King? Guy Francis and Charlie Lang both say the Yellow King. Dora Lang said the Yellow King. Yep. Why haven't there been more killings? Well, maybe there have more, and we just don't know about them. Ever wonder why that task force was so hot to take the case? Are you telling me you think the task force was in on it? I mean, he did say it goes all the way to the top or something like that. Is he dead? No, it. Well, it wasn't suicide. You know what he was looking at with the double murders? Guess he thought about it and made a choice. Took a phone call at 7.15. He's a lawyer. That's it. It's three hours and nothing till you see the blood. I want to see your incoming call logs now. It sure is fishy. I don't trust it one bit. The one guy that has information about the Yellow King is suddenly dead? Nah. Terrence, get prints on this. That's a public phone. No kind of lawyer makes calls from here? No. Well, somebody might have told him something. Gave him no choice. Did he mention Billy Lee Tuttle? Tuttle died a couple years back. Yeah. So what? Right after Cole showed back up in the state. You tell me right now why you're all over Cole. Yeah, thank you. I have been wondering that for five episodes. 
That's the place where they found the body originally. Still freaking creepy. Has that always been there? No. But the killer went back and left it there afterwards? He's been back. Yep. His reports, his stories, they don't add up. Talk to him about it already. We did. What? <laughs> Can't imagine that went well. You weren't getting a read on him. He was getting a read on you. Mm-hmm. Is this an old church or are there just statues all over that someone's left there? These are from the crime scene in Lake Charles. Recognize anybody in there? Lake Charles is a bit out of the way for you, ain't it? Your truck and a man fitting your description was spotted. He was looking at the old crimes, wasn't he? I don't know. Maybe the Ledoux boys knew you. Maybe you traveled the same circles. Maybe they had something on you. And they really think he did it. Get a warrant. Thanks for the beer. See, but I'm not even sure that he didn't do it. I don't think he did it, but I'm not positive. He's a bit of a wild card. Is he gonna find something? Creepy. Didn't he get you every bit of evidence? Didn't he push you where he wanted to go? He brought you Rianne Libya. She wasn't one of the dudes. She was one of his. When he heard the Abbeville prisoner, Francis knew something. You ever thought if he made that phone call to the prisoner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's something there, like a body or something. Okay guys, well that was episode 5. And I'm still thinking over everything that happened in this episode. A lot happened. The opening where they stormed the compound and wound up shooting that guy in the face and lying about it to the cops. That was really interesting to see. Okay, so in this episode, obviously they're questioning whether Rust is the real killer. I don't think he is, but I can 100% see why the detectives think that he is. The way he talks and all the philosophy that he's spouting is so dark. Especially in this episode, he was saying a lot of stuff about, you know, time is a flat circle and you're gonna do the same things over and over again and we can't change anything and it all happens anyway. So, you know, that kind of futility could lead them to believe that he doesn't really value human life very much or feel very responsible for his own actions or, you know, things like that that might make him more liable to kill somebody maybe so i don't think he's doing himself any favors in those interviews but besides all that you know they did say that they have witnesses who saw him at the crime scene like five times in his past he all you know not a lot of his backstory lines up when they went off book he lied and they've kind of figured out that you know his story doesn't line up there so i don't really blame them for suspecting him i don't think marty suspects him but they were kind of swaying him a little bit near the end there he was like you know yeah, that's true you know he did steer the investigation the entire way and he did bring all the clues and i guess he could be the killer i would be surprised if he's the killer i don't think he is but i have no idea who the killer is you know russ could have called him from the payphone so Rust is leaving the interrogation and it looks like Marty's kind of wrapping up as well. I'm interested to see, are they going to meet back up in present day? Are they going to have any encounters present day? I need to see what happened with their falling out. I really like that episode a lot. I'm going to keep thinking about it. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out True Detective episode 6. You guys know I've been loving this show, totally obsessed with it basically, and I was going to watch a movie tonight, um, but I can't. I want to watch this instead, so I'm bumping it up. I'm watching more of it. I'm dying to know what's going to happen. Let's get to it. Here we go. True Detective episode 6. And for whatever reason, he started working something that I didn't know about. Old missing person. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you about your boy. Where did Sonny go to school? Queen of Angels, one of them Tuttle schools. Tuttle? Like the religious guy? And it was at that school that he was at? You don't want to talk about something, it's okay. Who's this? Uh, you... Oh. We need to know about Rust and Cole in 2002. Something bad happened. Maybe Cole's involved. I knew Rust to be a good man, so I can't imagine what I can offer. Can I help you with anything, sir? Oh, yeah, please. I was thinking about this one. Oh, 
I was wondering if they were going to wind up friggin' hooking up. You're a cop, aren't you? I think I saw you before, years back. You came around this place asking about a girl. Oh. Marty. Beth. We're closed. You always hit the bottle this early in the day, Reverend. Yeah, he looks rough. What do you know about a Tuttle organization was set up to finance rural schools? It was called Will Springs. A lot of kids had a bus an hour or more. You know about that school on Pelican Island? I don't know it's specific, but there was one in 1988. Accusations of children being interfered with. It was kept internal. Why did you leave? Part of our lay duties was custodial. One night, cleaning the senior minister's library. I knocked over the letters of Telios de Lorca. When I picked up the book, this little folder falls out. A little folder of pictures, pictures of children. Not Jesus. Naked. Took it over to the morals officer, Deacon Farrar. He was close with Tuttle. He seemed angry that I brought it to him. He promised to look into it. I can't believe that was it. Saved up money for a place, got a straight job. It was so great how you turned everything around. Don't sleep with her, Marty. You want some bourbon? Mm-hmm. Sure he does. What happened in 2002? You, you pulled our last case, Charmaine Boudreaux? And they had a lot of static after that. That was a bad one. Sid, what is that? Like the baby syndrome? Sudden infant death syndrome, isn't it? What is what happened to Jessica? You first. You second. 23 days old. I lost one myself, Charmaine. So you third. You had him last year. You see, sometimes people mistake a child as an answer. Charmaine, have you ever heard of something called Munchausen by proxy? Like you make someone else sick? At exactly 4.49 a.m., the sleep apnea monitor was unplugged for 36 minutes. Then it was plugged back in, and the child's vitals had flatlined. The prison is very hard on people who hurt kids. If you get the opportunity, you should kill yourself. Wow, he's so cold. I was actually one of the men who found Kelly at that place. Is this the girl that they rescued when they shot that guy in the face? Kelly, I want to ask you a question about those men that hurt you way back then. Do you remember there were more than two? Is he going to get answers? It's a man with the scars, the giant. You make me watch what he did. Billy. Something's going on, Major. There are women, children disappearing. Someone is killing people, Major. Yeah. You got any bodies? He doesn't have any bodies. It's happened in the same area where those schools were set up, founded by Billy Lee Tuttle. His boss is not gonna like this. I caught zero logic in all that. Pure gibberish. He's not sucking up for him. You want to stay on? Do not ever say that to anyone in the state again. Yeah, you gotta keep that Tuttle thing to yourself, unless you have evidence. Even then. Take some time, all right? Get yourself together. See, I'm starting to second guess everything Rust is saying too, though. I'm like, this could all be a lie. They're pissed at each other, all right. Tuttle overdosed, accidentally, suppose it. Tuttle's house in Shreveport was broken into. Wasn't reported. Looking for what, was it Rust? I mean, maybe it's true. They're starting to convince me. Been in this room a long time. Whatever Rust is or was or became, don't call me again. We're trying to help him, Marty. Are these guys gonna meet up again? Is he gonna go find them? Is she gonna find something again and know that he's cheating? Marty, I didn't know you were home. Oh yeah, just cleaning it up. Hey, those flowers came in nice. What's she gonna do? Marty quit drinking, found religion for a while. I didn't love that, but we stayed together seven more years, some of it pretty good. Rust was an intense man, but he had integrity. Yeah, that's the vibe I get from him, too. Reverend, thanks for taking the time to see me on such short notice. What did you want to talk about, son? The Wellspring program. He's gonna be in big trouble for going to see him. You got any files? list of faculty well there's our archives i think i should put you together with one of our clerical workers thank you this is before you do that austin farrar that was very very unfortunate it became apparent that austin implemented certain funds we elected to handle it internally but what's this all about a um, wellspring program austin farrar dead women and children terrible how's that 
What you're working on. Well, I can't say anything about it at this point, Reverend. Things are getting tense. Why'd the Wellspring program shut down, Reverend? It couldn't sustain its costs. Reverend, thank you for your time today. Did he get something out of that? I always feel like when Rust is asking questions, it's obviously not the questions he's asking. He's, he's looking for something else. Badge and gun, Cole. You're suspended. One month without pay. I mean, he had to know they were going to find out. What's this? It's not Marty's wife, is it? He's doing it again. Oh, no. Are they going to sleep together? I can't live with it. Did you know? No. What are you doing in here? What happened? I'm off the job. That's not what I mean. Well, that'll do it. That's a falling out. And Marty's gonna find out. Is she gonna tell him the truth? Cause Marty will kill him. Like literally murder him. Hey, hon. Sit down. Tell him you know about the cheating anyway. You slept with someone else, but it doesn't have to be rest. I saw the pictures on your phone. Some crazy. I slept with someone and you know him. Stop there. Do not tell him. It was rust. <laughs> yeah, now it's angry Marty. He's gonna kill Rust. Well, obviously he's not gonna kill him. He's alive, but... Is Rust gonna show or does he know what's gonna happen? Cole's outside. Does he know he's suspended? Oh god. Oh, oh. This is gonna be so ugly. Don't take your gun. Yes, leave your gun. And he knows, I'm sure. He's a smart guy. Oh boy. Personal matter between us, boss. Is there anybody pressing charges? Not me. You want to say anything, Cole? I'm sure he doesn't. No. I quit. Nice hook, Marty. That's it. What about when he quit? Any idea why? Maybe it was old stuff between them. I never learned what it was about. She had to know that was gonna happen. I know she was just thinking of herself to get her revenge, but she kind of screwed over Rust. Is this Rust? Yeah, all right. Okay, they haven't seen each other probably since that day. Marty. Rust. Change your hair. I thought maybe we should talk. Yeah? About what? About your beer. Sure. I guess about the investigations. Are you gonna get back together now and solve the crime? Come on! It's not gonna kill him. Well, we know Marty's an, an angry guy. Okay guys, well that was True Detective episode six. Okay, so now we know. We know what the infamous falling out is. And you know, I think it's really interesting that the show is so, you know, complex and everything's so complicated, but this is so simple. Like it's something as simple and as like mundane as one guy slept with another guy's wife. That's their huge falling out. It wasn't something complicated. It was a cliche almost. That is what's unexpected. You almost expect it to be something complicated. I think that was an interesting way to go with it. So I actually kind of like that. I think that was a cool way to do it. it. Made sense for the story. And I, you know, I liked the very end. You know, they meet up again after 10 years and they're going to go get a beer and I guess, you know, talk about the case probably. Probably not the uh, falling out or the sleeping with the wife or whatever. That's probably not going to be on the table to talk about. But then, you know, the last two shots, Marty checking his gun to see if it's loaded, which is troublesome and then rust pulling away and you see his reflection and you see his broken tail light which is broken in the parking lot fight like 10 years ago so kind of goes back to that saying of his earlier in the episode people don't forgive they just have short memories kind of a throwback to that like a visual throwback to that sort of saying so i like that a lot that was a cool way to end it him and marty i want them to come back together and solve the crime but i don't know if that's in the card so we're gonna see Hey guys, today we're going to be watching True Detective episode 7. We've kind of been building the show, you know, going back and seeing what happened in the past and doing these interrogations. But in the last episode, it looked like they finished the interrogations. They both left the interrogation room and 
they drove off and they met up and they're gonna go have a beer. So it feels like in the story, we're now at the point where we can move forward and see what's gonna happen. Let's get into it. Here we go. True Detective, episode seven. I'm tense. I haven't seen each other in 10 years. Oh, he's still pissed. Why are we here? Great question. I'm dying to know. We left something undone. We gotta fix it. The murder? I need you to help me. Why would I? They say you can't account for your time. You got mm -hmm. some storage shed that you won't let them look at. It looks shady, man. The only way for you to understand is for me to show you. You gotta come see what I got. Why would I ever help you? Because you have a debt. A debt? Uh, that's ballsy to say to him. Sack. Exactly what I said. This is on YouTube, buddy. Man, there's so much between them. What do you got to show me? Oh my god, we're going to a storage locker. This is good stuff. I'm riveted. I can't wait to see what he's got in there. It could be anything. And the chemistry between these two guys is like electric. I think Marty might shoot him. It's possible. Kill him in his storage shed and lock it up. All right, what, what, what is it? What do you, what do you got? Oh my God, he's gonna shoot him. He's gonna shoot him. He's gonna shoot him in the locker. Oh my God, he's gonna shoot him. What you packing? He's not even afraid. He knows. I'm sure he was expecting that. Never be too careful. What do you have here? Women and children going missing. Taken from areas of schools that were funded by Tuttle's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why was Tuttle so interested in the Lang case, huh? Remember Charlie Lang said there's a group of men sacrificing. I think Tuttle recognized the scene. Okay, so what happened to him? 1988, child molestation at a preschool. It shuts down, reopens two years later. 16 kids in the class. One of them had just showed up for solicitation in New Orleans. Why are you asking me about that place? You ever see that reverend? You know, I think so, but who can remember way back? We'd go to sleep. Sometimes I didn't feel like I was asleep, but I must have been asleep because I couldn't move. Like drugged? There were men taking pictures, sometimes other things. Who were they? They had animal faces. Animal faces? Like with antlers on? You ever seen these men's faces? They didn't all have animal faces. I don't remember them, just one. He had bad scars all around his mouth. Yes, that's him. You remember him? Yeah. Girl comes forward and says she was chased by a spaghetti monster. This is our man with the scars on his face. You have access, but I don't. I need case files. I need missing persons. That's what he wants from Marty. Jesus Christ, man. He's not gonna help him. There's something you won't have to look at. No other way around it. I mean, like I said on the phone, I, I want to ask you about those cops. They wanted to know about the fight in O2. They think Russ did something. He didn't. I didn't think he did. Okay, good. They don't think he did either. You talk to him? I don't think she has, no. No. How is he? Different. Same. He needs my help. Are you gonna help him? Yes. Why? I have to. Yeah, that case is weighing on him, too, I think. Billy Lee Tuttle owns three houses. I, uh, waited till he went on his spring ministry tour. If you did something, I don't want to hear about it. Make a pretty ace be an amen. Yeah, I think he broke in. I don't think he killed Tuttle. Maybe he did, I don't know, but I, I don't think. But he, he went in and got what he wanted, for sure. He never reported the Baton Rouge break-in, just the Shreveport house. I know in the safe there. Oh, frig. And there's a videotape. No, 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 no. Just stay on Marty's face. I don't want to see the tape. I don't want to see. Jesus! Oh. You watch all that? I had to see if any of the men took off the mask. My little girl's Marie Vaughn, no. Did you kill Toto? No. I think some people took him out after they found out what was taken from the safe. What can I do to help? Marty's very troubled by that. that that's a good reflection on his character. He's a good man. How you been? <clears throat> I don't ever remember you asking me a personal question. Yeah, that was like a little, I'm a little thrown off by that too. Why did you quit, Marty? You've been boss, you know? Yeah, I was thinking the same. I guess the job just kind of ran its course with me. 
You pull that Marie Fine no file? There wasn't one. Fort's gone. Backtracking that. Bob had a little boy. Been missing since 85. Sorry. What's this about exactly? Man asked us to locate his daughter. Looks like she might have known DeWall. Pop said they died too quick. Is there anything that you can tell us about these guys? Reggie was always asking about the girls in my school, and a couple times I saw the walls just said kooky stuff. Any chance you ever saw a third man with a man who had a bunch of scars on the bottom of his face? Yeah, he did. I remember that face. My pop let him use our deer camp once. Give me funny looks all night. Any chance this man with the scars was another that dude? No. You uh, ever see him again? Never again. I don't remember. We're private investigators, uh, ancestral research, mineral rights along the coast. Mr. Lloyd, you worked for Mr. Sam Tuttle 19 years, right? Oh, maybe she's seen some shit then. Mm-hmm. So you know his son, Billy Lee, the cousin, Eddie? No boys. Mm -hmm. What about extended family? Those days, families won't be out. Uh, Sam Tuttle had kids outside his marriage. Don't you know it? He had lots of children. You remember one that maybe had scars all across the bottom of his face? I think that was Mr. Sam's grandchild. What's his name? What's his name? I shouldn't be talking to you about this. Yes, you should. Give us a name. Could you ever look at something for me? One, one thing. Definitely. You know Kakosa. What is it? What is it? What is it? Mineral rights, my ass. Death is nothing. You need to leave Kakosa. <laughs> well, that escalated. Those freaking stick things. Did some backtracking on the Marie Fontenot stuff. Sheriff signed off on the report made an error, but he didn't take the original complaint on her. Deputy did. These guys are buddies. Steve Geraci. If it got covered up, Steve might know something. Where is he now? Uh, this is the thing. He's sheriff of Iberia Parish. Sheriff, uh. The only person can arrest a sheriff is the governor. Just having a little chat. Car battery and two jumper cables argue different. Come on. And you're on the phone, you were saying something about that Fontenot girl. Extended family wants to locate. I recall, girl's mom was single, drug charges. Little girl went to live with a birth daddy. It is as if I'm remembering right. Mm-mm. He talked to the family back then? No, Ted Childers, sheriff. You know. I don't like this guy. He's shady. You better get those jumper cables ready. Yep. Why do I think this is gonna be Marty's wife? Am I nuts? Girl, just when they're starting to be friends, come on. I like her, but like, what's her deal? This is a weird visit. I talked to Marty. He talked to the cops too. What do you want? Russ, just tell me it's something that's not gonna get him hurt. Well, I can't tell you that. You never sat. Right with me. You asking me to lie to you about him? Get on out of here. Your class gonna blaze up. After the other day, I, I, I was thinking. So are they gonna, for real, get like info out of him by torturing him? Ah. Uh, Is Russ just hiding on that boat somewhere? And say, Steve, you know that fine no girl going off with her daddy? I, I just wasn't clear. Was it you knew for a fact she went with her daddy or somebody told you that family talked to Sheriff Childress? He's got to be getting suspicious. Starting to think this wasn't just a friendly invitation. I said all I remember about the girl. Don't ask again. Thing is, Steve, I ain't going to ask you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Is it going to get violent here? He is. Boom. You realize who I am now, you assholes? Yeah, they're in big trouble. That church Cole talked about is supposed to be right here. We going in the right direction. We heading south. Is this the two interrogators? Let me know when you see something. Ain't nothing to see. Uh, are they going to find something and then they know that Russ telling the truth? You know there's a little church around here? Black minister? That place shut down just after all them hurricanes. You live around here? No, sir. Got a parish contract. Take care of some cemeteries, public schools. This guy's kind of creepy. Is he involved? My family. Thanks. Yeah, who are you? You're shady. My family's been here a long, long time. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Who is that guy? Okay guys, well that was True Detective episode seven. That was a good one. I like that one a lot. I 
really like to see Rust and Marty back together. Obviously, that makes me happy. Two buddies, two cops, former cops working together to solve the crime. That makes me happy. I liked that we went and saw inside the storage shed and we kind of saw Russ's like layer of what he's been working on this whole time. So that was cool. The scene where Marty watches the videotape and has that really intense reaction. I really liked that scene. Like obviously I didn't like the idea of the videotape. That's horrifying. Yeah, that was really bad. But Marty's reaction to it was very powerful and Woody Harrelson did a really good job. I really felt like his, like his pain and his disgust and how in that moment he kind of decided like, well, I have to, I have to solve this now. I'm, I can't just walk away from that after seeing that. So that was a really important scene. So we did see at the very end, we saw the guy with the lawnmower and I was like trying to see, it, it looked like he was scarred, I, but it could have been a beard. But I mean, I think that's our, I think that's our scarred man. I, I really got a very creepy, terrible vibe from him. So if that's our scarred man, then yikes. He's the guy that's been mowing the lawn, like that we've seen in other episodes, which is kind of also creepy that he's like been there the whole time. Ugh, I hate that they were like all around it. They were talking to him. So one thing I did notice was a couple of times in this episode, they mentioned a circle or um, a rotation. Even Marty kind of said, am I, you know, have you rotated through everyone in your life and now you're back to like annoying me or whatever it was. Rust also mentioned a circle and then at the end, the guy is mowing in a circle i just feel like that time is a flat circle that was said a few episodes ago like visually they keep doing like callbacks to it which is really cool that was a good one i really liked it i'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap it up i'm very curious it doesn't feel like the kind of show that can end on a happy note i hope i'm wrong about that Hey guys, today we have made it. We are at the final last episode of True Detective. I'm sad that it's over. This is such a great show. I really love these characters. I could watch them for many more seasons, I feel like. Let's get into it. Here we go. True Detective, episode eight. Are we back at the place where they shot that guy in the face? Is that the, the Boy, lawn guy? Rick. He's got that thing. Be good, I'll bring you some more water. That guy's so gross. Does he have someone tied up? Oh, he's nuts. Does he have scars on his face? It does look like he has scars. Top notch walk this morning. He has an accent. It's been weeks since I left my mark. Would that they had eyes to see. Hey, don't you give him his billionaire that dirty face. Don't be mean to a dog. Do not be mean to that dog. Sorry, old chap. Is he actually British? Would that I had eyes to see. I, I can't believe he said that. I have very important work to do. My Murderer? ascension removes me from the disc in the loop. A near final stage. Disc in the loop. Circle language. All right, boys. Oh, they brought the tape. Shoot. I hope they cut away. I don't want to see any of that. Not a little bit. Don't look at me. Look at the TV. I am interested to see what his reaction is to it. Why are you showing me this? Hello, girls. The one you said went to see your daddy, Marie Fondo. I took a missing juvenile report. He looks ill. File said report made an error. I never wrote that. So I marched it right into the sheriff, Ted Childers. He did it. He said he'd changed it, that he knew the mother and the father. I just follow what the big man says, right? I mean, he looks disturbed by it, and I do think that chain of command thing is probably right. What are they gonna do? First off, we found this tape in your possession. Second off, all findings are ready to be forwarded to media outlets. Should either one of us get sworn a warrant, as people are wont to do in your neck of the woods. As people are wont to do. I like that phrase. It's gonna come back on you, you assholes. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna just lay down on this. Hey, one other thing, Steve. Got an old sniper pal. All right, we see cuffs or coffins, you're gonna end up in the dirt. You're psycho bitch. Don't cut me, boy. You hear me? He's pissed. <laughs> Oh, ho, 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 ho. wow, that was a nice touch, Russ. Very nice. Why green ears? I mean, assuming that's our guy. Green, like cutting the lawn. My thinking was leaves of some kind. 
So you can figure it out just now. Come on, Marty. Turn those wheels. Looking for 95 Doorland canvassing photos. Why? He's got it. Does he have it? Come over here. I really want Marty to crack this. Does that look like a fresh paint job to you? Green ears. Maybe he painted that house. Okay. I'm going to look up all the dressies. Did our scarred up guy paint that house? We went at it, day you quit. Were you holding back? <laughs> yeah, I don't see how I could have. You think you could have put me down? Hell, that I had to kill you. Yep. <clears throat> you know, when she told me, she said, not to blame you, that wasn't your choice. Everybody's got a choice, Marty. She said, I sure blamed you. Blame me for what? For pushing a good woman to the point where she had to use me. Mm-hmm. They're just laying it all out. Man, it's funny what time does to anger, you know? She came out of the bar. When? I'm gonna make sure I wouldn't get you in any trouble. I reckon it's best to just avoid her name. You never like being judged. No, you're right, I don't, not by you. Well, I could read it all over your face. Problem with your face, not mine. These guys, this is sort of amusing to me. Do you remember back in 94, 95, did you get your house painted? Yes, I did. A nice green. Do you happen to remember who it was that painted your house? I don't remember the name, but they were nice men. They've worked for a parish. Tuttle? They charged 250 for the whole house exterior. And one of the men, he had scarred. Yes. Back then, did you or your husband work? My husband, Butch, he's always worked. Did he pay his taxes? Always. So that'll be a paper trail. Husband took the ride off December 94 to Childress and Son. Childress and Son. Business license issued to Billy Childress. Same name as that. Sure. Yeah. One of state CID. One of the U.S. attorney. Two national papers. It's a whole story. It's a copy of the tape in each one. Everything we got. 24 hours passes and I don't stop you. Mail them all out. Okay, I thought they were just going to mail them out before they solved this. <laughs> He looks a little on edge. I'm a little on edge. <laughs> this looks like it. Is it. Did they track him down? Are they gonna see one of those little creepy teepees? Can't pop in here. Can't get a signal. There's no signal out there. I don't like this. I don't feel good about this. Marty, this is the place. Yeah, this is. I don't think they should split up. Boys, get in your car, back it up. Don't split up. Someone is watching them. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. Is there any way that I could, uh, use your phone? We don't have no phone, mister. Where's Bill of Childers? He's in this house, mister. I think you should call him. No! No! Marty, clear the house! They can't do this with just the two of them. <gasps> don't move! On your knees, now. It's not gonna be that easy. No. Oh my god. Come with me, little man. Oh my god. It's like him versus Rust. Marty, hustle it. Rust needs you. Is his mouth sewn shut? <laughs> Oh my god, I hope Russ is okay. Russ! Here! Okay, he's alive. Oh my god. I don't know what this guy's capable of. Why am I watching this alone at night? Come on inside, please. Is he above him? Is he up, is he up high? That was a weird shot, right, like up here. That was really weird. What are those, like baby shoes? What is this? Oh my god, is that a body? Oh my god. To your right, little priest. He's just walking right this into it. You know what they did to me? Is that another body? Come die with me, little priest. Come die with me? I, uh, I feel like he's gonna blow this up. Is that all the clothes of everyone he's killed? Right. Is this his synesthesia? Oh my god! He's dead for sure. It's gonna head him. He's a tough guy. Oh 
my god! I'm just gonna kill them both. Jesus Christ. Ew, rest. Don't pull it out. I don't think you should. I knew this guy was gonna do the right thing and follow them eventually. The last thing I remember was on the ground, sirens, saying my friend's name. I think Rust is dead. Man Cole shot dead was the old man's son. No records. Girl was at least a half sister. Knife cast came back from that shit. One of them matched our Lake Charles case, another matched our Lane's ones. Yeah, I mean, they know. How's Rust? He's dead. I woke up. In the meantime, the state attorney general will have discredited rumors that the accused was related to Edwin Tuttle. Yeah, I was just gonna say, how is this related to Tuttle? He's awake. Well, good. Phew, he didn't die, okay. <laughs> just sitting there, chugging a drink. Nurse said I could come in. They're buddies. I saw him, Marty. He was mowing that schoolyard until I got out and couldn't tell how tall he was. He was sitting in his face. Was... I was wondering if they were going to recognize him. Tuttles could have been in the video. We didn't get them all. That ain't what kind of world it is, but we got ours. I'll never change, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Doc said, uh, probably get out in a few days. Oh, hey. I brought you some. Marty loves him now. Are we getting engaged? Ah, let's get up front of this roof, huh? There was a moment. When he saw the swirling? I could feel my definition. And beneath that darkness, there's another kind. It was deeper. I could feel I knew my daughter waited for me. So clear. It was like I was part of everything that I ever loved. And all I had to do was let go. And I did. And I disappeared. I could still feel her love there. <laughs> then I woke up. Didn't you tell me one time you used to make up stories about the stars? Yeah, I was, you know, in Alaska. Out of the night nice skies. It's just one story. The oldest. What's that? Light versus dark. I know we ain't in Alaska, but it seems to me dark is a lot more territory. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, listen. She pointed me in the direction of that car. You know what, I'd protest, but it occurs to me that you're unkillable. You wanna go back and get clothes or anything? <laughs> okay guys, well that was True Detective episode 8. That was a good one. I was surprised how it ended, but when I sit here and think about it, it's not that surprising. I mean, it's like the show, I don't want to say came full circle, but it kind of did. We started with Rust, who was very much a nihilist. In the end, he had sort of an epiphany, maybe even a spiritual experience. His final words in the show, I think the light is winning. That's a complete character reversal for him, and it just shows how much he grew over the course of the series. Even if, you know, his major change kind of came in that very last episode, he did. He he did a complete 180. It was nice to see Marty and Rust become friends in the end, have that bond between them. I don't really think the show is even about the crime. It's not really about that. It, that was just sort of a vehicle for us to talk about other things. Specifically, you know, they even said light versus dark, you know, good versus evil, bad men and worse men and things like that. Like, you know, bigger ideas. I think that's what this show is really about, is bigger ideas. And I think Marty's line in the hospital really says it all. I was thinking at the beginning that this show could go one of two ways. You know, they, they solve it all or they don't solve it all. And that's not really what happened. It was a little more ambiguous. You know, he said, I can't quite remember, but he said something like, we can't solve all of it, we, but we solved our part of it or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they got their man, but they didn't solve all of it. We didn't find out every answer. We didn't find every connection. I think that was good. I think it was good not to wrap it neatly in a bow and to still have some resolution though on it for Marty and for rust that was needed for their characters for them to acknowledge you know you can't solve everything all the time you're not gonna find every answer that isn't what life is like it really isn't it would have been a little too much i think if they just solved everything and we're like well that's it crime solved you know so it was a fine line to walk there being able to use that ambiguity that that we've sort of fostered all the way along they were able to have a semi-ambiguous ending 
while still giving us resolution on the main murderer. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. I think that was a very good ending. It felt sort of hopeful. It felt like kind of a nice ending. They bonded, they kind of rekindled their friendship. It seemed like Marty especially was quite fond of Rust and that was really nice to see. It was just a nice cap to what has been such a cool series, such a unique show, such a thoughtful show, very different than anything I've really watched before. And I can't wait to hear in general what you guys thought of this show. Thank you guys so much for watching along with me. I really appreciate it. I had a great time. I hope you had a great time too. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.